How to design a SaaS app? After 10 years in design, the brief answer is a great app comes with a great team. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Bye. Okay, understanding of the complex design process is also important, so you ensure that all necessary actions are taken and that nothing slips through the cracks. In this video, I will guide you through 9 steps crucial when designing your own application. For a handy checklist of these steps, check the video description below. I also need to mention that you don't necessarily need to go through all the following steps in the strict order. The design process is not linear. Depending on your specific case, choose where to start, jump from one step to another, make changes and iterate until you receive the best result. Now we move to the stage 1. Define the purpose and target audience. To design an app, you firstly need to understand what you want to create and why. At this moment it's enough to take a pen and paper, get concentrated and think one of the following questions. What is the main goal of my app? What you there's problems it's going to solve. Why are users supposed to choose exactly my product? As well, remember that your application is also a business tool, so you have to take into account business requirements, user goals, and technology capabilities. Let's take an example of a Populate, one of our recent clients. Here's how they would formulate it. Business goal. To build the most customer-centered clinical software in the world. User goal. To spend more time engaging with patients, improving care, and maximizing practice profitability. Application task. To maximize doctor's time, saving relative to status quo clinical software. Setting goals is a vital stage, because you can make a great design, but if the app solves neither the company's nor user's problems or the developers will not be able to implement it, design has no sense. With the purpose defined, you have to make sure your assumptions are viable. Conduct market and user research. It happens product owners put forward hypotheses without testing them and immediately send them to developers. The result is functionality that no one needs and a waste of time and money. In order not to create useless apps, study the market competitors and potential users. You can start with a competitive analysis. Most apps you can find on the market are not unique. They are either a combination or improved versions of already existing products. So don't be disappointed that you are not one of a kind. A competitive analysis is your chance to find areas for improvements and define your unique value proposition. When revisiting and comparing your rivals, pay attention to the following things. What features does the app perform? Write out which features are common for all competitors, which are unique and which features the app lacks. What price and model does it use? Analyzing the way your competitors monetize their businesses will help you decide which pricing model is the best to use. When was it last updated? This information will show you if your specific app will be your active competitor or not. If that's a mobile app, how many downloads does it have? The number of downloads will show you how popular the app is. You will also understand whether the problem the app solves is relevant for users. What are the app's reviews and ratings? Analyzing app's ratings and reading user reviews help you understand what people like and what they want to improve or app. That's how you can study the market with your potential competitors. Next, don't neglect the user research. To make a great app, you need to understand who and in what context will use your product. That's why, to make sure your app is viable and people need it, you should define and learn the target audience. You can do it by conducting user interviews, making surveys, or studying focus groups. There are many other research methods worth your attention. I've covered this topic well in my video on the UX research process. Make sure you check it out. The link is down in the description. And we move to the Stage number three, develop information architecture. After you've done your research and understand your users well, your next step is to plan how your product should be structured. Here you build information architecture that serves as a blueprint of an app, outlining what features exist and where they are located in the overall structure. It's crucial because it ensures that your app's content is logically structured and easy for the users to find. Now it's time to think about how to design an app so that the users can easily interact with it. That is, you have to think about user flows and navigation. Once you've decided what features the application will have, create a user flow, a flow chart that represents the path the user takes to get their jobs done with the help of your application. User flows are very useful because they provide a logical idea of how your application should work and solve users' problems. Once the user flow is ready, you can map the user experience with wireframes. Wireframes are low-fidelity, simplified outline of a product screens. Designers use them to establish the basic structure of an app's pages before visual design and content is added. Wireframes will give you a clear understanding of what screens you need to have designed and how the design is supposed to work. Once the wireframe is created, it's reviewed, tested, and refined based on the feedback from the design team, stakeholders, and sometimes even potential users. The goal is to perfect the layout, structure, and functionality before moving on to the next stages. After wireframes are finalized, designers start working on the visual design. That's stage number six. Screen sketches evolve into mockups. This includes adding graphics, typography, color, and images. 
A mockup is a high fidelity, static representation of a product, which gives stakeholders a clear picture of what the final product will look like. And the next stage is to prototype and test. Development is the most expensive part of any product, so it's important to check possible shortcomings and correct errors before heading an app layout to the development team. To test the application, the designer creates prototypes, a rough version of the product that allows you to understand how the app looks and feels. A prototype allows designers to receive feedback from users and stakeholders and make necessary adjustments to the design to improve its usability, functionality, and overall user experience. Now, when everything is ready, it's time for a design handoff. UI UX designers are people who know how to make things intuitive and accessible. To make a pile of mockups easier to grasp for developers, our designers arrange different user flows into different pages in Figma. Inside Figma's pages, all flows are logically organized and all screens are labeled. To facilitate the understanding of the further development work on our designs, we usually supplement them with the UI kits. UI kit is a seed of a future design system. It summarizes some UX tips for developers and all standard UI components, such as buttons, inputs, navigations, font, and typography. And here we move to the last step, review and refinement. Design excellence is a journey, not a destination. It evolves in tandem with your changing market and user needs. Your UX efforts should seamlessly adapt to these shifts. I developed this idea in one of my recent videos, don't miss it out. Actually, that was the last stage in our guide how to design an app. But I cannot stop reminding you that design is not linear. In fact, it's a never-ending process. So you'll have to repeat a series of these stages, tweaking and improving your product while getting closer to optimal solution with each repetition. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful. Don't forget to peek into the video's description. You'll find a neatly organized checklist with nine product design steps we discussed today. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. See you in the next video.